The shocking 1927 construction plan deemed impossible because, thankfully, there wasn't enough concrete in the world. The world would be entirely different if it had gone ahead, following the vast bloodshed across Europe during WWI. In 1927 German architect Hermann Sorgel embarked on the formulation of an enormous engineering project that he believed could prevent further conflict. It was called Atlantropa. The utopian plan was grand to say the least. It would involve the creation of a series of dams located at the Strait of Gibraltar. These dams would be able to generate enough electricity to power half of Europe. Further dams would be created across the Strait of Sicily to link Italy to Tunisia and the Dardanelles to link Greece to Asia. The creation of these huge dams would link Europe to Africa through a massive road and rail network. The Mediterranean would be drained in order to create space for more human settlement, with sea levels estimated to lower by up to 200 meters. With the Mediterranean Sea significantly reduced in size, Europe and Africa would be able to merge to form a Euro-African supercontinent. Thanks to the newly available land and expanse of power generating dams, Sorkin believed his vision could welcome a golden age involving plentiful land which would end food shortages and create an abundance of electricity and employment. With a new possession of territories in different climate zones, Atlantropa would be able to compete successfully with the Americas and Asia, as well as remaining self-sufficient, with no one wanting for anything. Architect believed the creation of a new continent would prevent future conflict to Sorgil. The plan didn't seem unrealistic. After all, such gigantic engineering projects as the Suez Canal and the Hoover Dam had been successful. Although, not everyone agreed, with some calculations at the time speculating on whether there would even be enough concrete available in the world to build the huge structures. Unfortunately, there was a dark side to Sorgel's utopian vision of Atlantropa. Sorgel may have been forward-thinking and idealistic in his great plan, but he also held strong beliefs when it came to nationality and race. Draining the Mediterranean would have meant redirecting the water somewhere. For this, Sorgel already had a solution in mind. By blocking the Congo River, Central Africa would be purposefully flooded, displacing millions with water redirected to the Sahara. Vast lakes and farmland would be created, with black Africans segregated as a source of labor. Essentially, the new supercontinent would be for the benefit of Europeans. Sorgel took his concept to the party he believed would best support his vision, the Nazis. At that time Hitler's focus was on the Soviet Union so the plan was not supported. With no official backing, Sorgel's project came to a standstill. Incredibly, following the end of WW2, interest in Atlantropa once again rose. The project was genuinely considered by a number of politicians and industrialists, with much publicity received in newspapers and magazines of the time. But Sorgel's unwillingness to remove the racist element from his dream left it once more at a standstill. The arrival of the nuclear reactor with its practical ability to create vast sources of energy would mark the end of the Atlantropa project, although the architect never gave up his efforts to promote his vision. In 1952, Sorgel, along with his dream, died when he was knocked from his bicycle on the way to give a lecture on his project. In 1977, popular mechanics analyzed the challenges that might have arisen, concluding, it would require a dam 18 miles long and up to 1,000 feet deep and 1,500 feet wide at its base. The volcanic Mediterranean seafloor, relieved of all that weight, might react in eruptions and earthquakes, and the sea level everywhere else in the world would rise by 3 feet.